Hi, this is part one of my perfume collection. Let's start with probably the most popular and overhyped uh, perfume that I have and the only representative of the sweet gourmand genre. This is Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's a honey tuberose vanilla bomb. I am not a great fan of sweet perfumes, so I feel like this one is enough to represent the entire group of gourmand scents that are so popular nowadays. Initially, I thought the legs up were kind of uh, cute and original, but now they're just really annoying for storage purposes. And then I have uh, two minis by one of my favorite perfume brands, and this is Bottega Veneta. This is Eau de Velours, which is it is Bottega Veneta with a touch of a rose and this is to my surprise not very uh, well liked by the people around me but I love it nevertheless. And another mini from uh, Bottega Veneta, this is Ose Chouel, which is a slightly lighter version of the original Bottega Veneta. Both of them have a uh, note of uh, soft suede and this is slightly more floral and airy and this is a bit more powdery and rosy the next one is a celebrity perfume one of the few that i like and this is rogue by rihanna this one is often compared to bottega veneta but it's uh, slightly more sweet and um, a little bit more powdery and uh, it doesn't necessarily have the best dry down on my skin, unfortunately. So I'm not going to repurchase it, but I'm keeping it for um, sentimental reasons, mostly. Next we have um, one of the best Zara perfumes. This is from the first collaboration with Jo Malone. It's Vetiver Pampalus. It's an excellent scent that portrays a very realistic grapefruit with slight tinge of vetiver and it's very light and it's very easy to wear. It's, um, it's perfectly balanced. Um, I just wouldn't really call it a perfume. It's more of an eau de cologne kind of concentration, but it's very lovely and um, I kind of regret not buying a bigger bottle. I have two more from Zara, that first uh, Joe Malone collaboration. Um, one of them is Ebony Wood. And this is a really, really interesting and original scent. One that's easily recognizable and I don't think I have smelled many perfumes that um, have this scent profile. It's really gorgeous out of the bottle, but for some reason it's uncomfortable for me to wear. So I would, I would say that this would make a great uh, home scent or scented candle. I'm not sure how I feel about uh, wearing it on myself. And I feel exactly the same about the next one, which is uh, Bohemian Bluebells by Zara. And this is um, a very concentrated lavender with vanilla which is a combination that I really enjoy um, when smelled um, in its natural state. Lavender, I mean, I love the scent of lavender, essential oils. Um, however, I find it very um, uncomfortable to wear as a perfume. And I struggle with lavender, be it um, with vanilla, be it in a more uh, traditional masculine combination. So I try to stay away from vanilla-based scents and... Um, um, Ariana Grande is uh, REM is a is another example of a perfume that I really like the smell of, but I am unable to pull off as a comfortable daily wear. Next, we have um, this really really beautiful, cute little aqua allegoria. This is Neroleia Bianca, and this was uh, gifted to me by a friend. It's a very fresh, soapy, sunny, uh, light Neroli scent. 
Neroli is not a note that I usually gravitate towards, but um, I find this incredibly refreshing and it just makes me smile. It's such a such an easy wear. And of course, um, the Guerlain packaging is traditionally very beautiful. So I'm, I'm really happy to have this one. Um, the next uh, I have is a bit of an oddball and that also <laughs> represents perfume profiles that I don't necessarily enjoy much. And this is Jimmy Choo Illicit. The bottle is okay. It's supposed to represent the skyline of New York. The design um, is, is interesting. The scent itself, this is a ginger honey combination with some powdery notes and is very reminiscent of uh, Boucheron Palace de Vendôme. But um, I just don't have the best chemistry with this perfume. And uh, as much as I love ginger, I will, I will just gift it to, to someone. Another uh, kind of a random uh, purchase that made its way into my collection, but was a nice surprise, is uh, another, in my opinion, a really cute bottle. Very nice packaging. And this is Nina Ricci uh, Rose, Rose Extase. Rose Extase. Not sure how to pronounce that. Um, and this uh, is part of the um, a line of flankers that Nina Ricci has that are based on rose. And uh, they have the more concentrated uh, rose versions. I think there was like five or six of them. They were uh, composed by Francis Kirkjan. And this is a sweet pink rose with a raspberry. It's a tinge too sweet for me. I love it for um, winter times, but um, I think this is the lightest offering they have in this line and it's still a bit too much for me, but it's just too cute and I will definitely um, use it up. Next we have um, Ferrari Noble Fig. And I bought this without trying it first based off reviews that it's a very refreshing fig scent and fig is a note that I really like to, to smell. I like the scent of the tree, the leaves, the, the fruit and um, this is uh, one of my most favorite perfume notes as well. Unfortunately, this uh, particular perfume didn't um, really uh, hit um, the right note for me. It smells, uh, yes, it has a fig note, but it's it's OD and it's a bit uh, dry. I would say it doesn't have the uh, milkiness of the fig fruit. It's mostly, I think, based around the, the leaves of the tree. And uh, it has this um, kind of dusty and dry, dry down as if you're smelling uh, cut grass that's been dried already. Um, it's a very, um, I would say, easy to wear scent, but it doesn't really leave any impression. Um, it, it's kind of a forgettable scent, but okay, nonetheless, I think it, it's great to just uh, wear it casually when you don't want your perfume to, to bother your senses, if I may uh, phrase it like that. And next up, there is another... Uh, fig fragrance and this is Elizabeth Arden green tea fig I think this is another really beautiful bottle I like the illustrations I like the figs at the front and the tea leaf at the back and uh, if you're a fan of the green tea line then um, you, you may um, purchase this with uh, without uh, any second thoughts this is um, the classic green tea with a little tinge of uh, fig. It's not too sweet, it's not too creamy, it's not too green, it's just right. And um, again, this makes for a very easy, casual, everyday wearing scent. It is surprisingly long-lasting. I would say, despite it being light and not projecting strongly, this is one that will uh, go, um, it will stay with you for the entire day. Next, we have another uh, favorite fig, and this is uh, the uh, notorious uh, Womanity by Thierry Mugler. Look at that face. 
She looks to me like a like a cyber warrior of some sorts. It's a very, very easily recognizable uh, bottle, uh, very unique packaging, I would say. I don't necessarily like the bottle. I find it a bit clunky. It's it's too tall. Um, the face is, is fierce, right? Um, and there is some sort of uh, paradox between the, the color of the sand and then the, uh, the upper part of it. But um, this is a very uh, well done, in my opinion, um, provocative, but still very uh, likable and very unique fig fragrance it has notes of fig sea salt and some people say caviar which i don't really smell but this is a smell that i um remembered instantly the first time i sprayed it on i was confident that i will buy this it's a bit challenging to wear uh and it's one of those perfumes that you have to um be able to create some sort of uh, good chemistry with it doesn't wear the same on everyone and uh, some people really uh, have um, negative opinions or experiences wearing it so it's it, it can be slightly polarizing but i personally love it and it's it's one of my favorites another very iconic Thierry Mugler perfume is uh, Angel and here I have a flanker of Angel. This is the Eau Crociere from 2019. I think at that time Mugler House was already owned by L'Oreal and you know how they have shifted the focus um, with the new releases to a more easily likable perfumes and I would say this is this is an easy easy Angel to, to wear. Um, it has just a little bit of the angel DNA and um, everyone says it's supposed to smell of mango. But what I uh, smell here mostly is uh, passion fruit. So it's passion fruit, some angel and uh, some uh, patchouli. But it's, uh, it's really toned down and tame. And I find this to be a very happy and cheerful scent. And I also love the, the design of the bottle despite it not being able to be um to be stand on its own i think it's way more beautiful than the uh, newer ones that have a stand but look kind of clunky i love this one it's it's a beautiful beautiful perfume and a beautiful bottle another uh, iconic uh, mugler scent is the coveted uh, Alien Assons Absolute. This has been discontinued. People have been scurrying to get this, and uh, it just um, came into my collection uh, slightly randomly. I think I got this from a swap with someone. And uh, to me, if it is true that this smells the way that the liquid looks, to me, this is the alien dna with lots of amber lots of warm notes um, maybe some spices vanilla and uh, it has a slightly mentholated opening but it dries down to a really gorgeous warm powdery and uh, very very special and very warm and comforting scent i don't find this um as polarizing as the original alien uh it, it has some uh warmth added to it and it, it gives me the feeling of wearing a very cozy and warm sweater and uh, of course i think the bottle is is really beautiful the next one is another alien and i would say this is the polar opposite of Assons absolute and this is alien all extraordinaire and uh, again this is uh, an example where the perfume smells the way it, the packaging and the liquid looks it's a bright sparkling effervescent i would say summery version of alien and it has uh, notes of tea on top it's slightly bitter and it's a cool scent so it's uh, very refreshing in a way um it also has uh, 
some sort of a musk or uh, some people call that gray musk note that is a bit challenging for me and that's why I haven't worn that much of it but um, I'm, I'm getting better at um, in my relationship with this perfume so it's definitely staying and then I have probably one of uh, my favorite perfumes ever and uh, this is Narciso Rodriguez, Narciso, Eau de Parfum. Narciso Rodriguez is a designer that I really respect. I really love their um, concept when it comes to both to clothing and to fragrances. I love the minimalist design. Um, and I find the perfumes to be very um, original and very wearable, but also um, they stand out. Um, and um, this is the um, this is the flagship fragrance from the, the cubes. So this is Narciso, and um, it's a very nice, uh, slightly uh, woody, slightly creamy gardenia, and um, the signature musk of Narciso. They seem to have two different musks. One of them is um, the baseline of the cubes, and the other one is the baseline of the rectangles. They are very different. And to me, the cubes are the more easily wearable uh, line and the ones that don't require um, such a great um, combination of the person who's wearing it and the scent to, to create this um, combination of um, magic and chemistry. These are easier to wear, way easier to wear than the rectangular ones. And... Um, Next I have, and this is probably the perfume that I would be happy to keep as my only perfume for the rest of my life, if I had to, which I hope uh, I will not, but this one could easily be my perfume for life, uh, and this is Narciso Eau de Toilette. It has been, to the best of my knowledge, uh, sadly discontinued. And um, this is similar to Narciso, the white cube, but um, it has a note of peony and a very fresh and airy rose. Rose is usually a note I struggle with um, in perfumes, but in, when it comes to Narciso, it's done um, in a very subtle and beautiful way. And I could easily uh, use this perfume only. It's very feminine and it's... Um, it, it just fits all kinds of occasions, casual, um, more elegant, and it, it's just a great all-rounder. And uh, the last one in this part of the collection is another Narciso Rodriguez. Also, as far as I know, this is discontinued. This is Narciso Rodriguez for her Lapsulu. And it has a signature rectangular mask with some tuberose, some amber, um, and some very interesting um, development. To me, the opening is slightly shocking. It almost smells like um, nail polish cleaner, but in, in a couple of seconds, um, it starts to develop in a really lovely and very interesting and slightly um, provocative, if I may say, uh, scent. It doesn't uh, create a huge projection, but it gives uh, this very lovely feeling for um, a whole day of wearing. The three Narciso representatives, the Muglers, and the entire bunch. This is part one.